Hello, my name is Liz. Welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. I will be guiding you on this journey today. This is a reading for the 5-1 human design profile. My 5-1 baddies, because <laughs> I'm a 5-1 too, but <clears throat> if you don't know your human design profile, there's a link in the description below for you to get your human design body graph. It has a ton of great information on there, but for the purpose of these readings, we're going to be using your profile. Interesting, like a couple things. Okay. <laughs> so I've been doing like three readings a day um, because then like I have enough time to go through and edit, which takes forever, blah, blah, blah. Right. And my favorite number is three. So um, it just feels good. But I chose the order this morning. I think I, well, I'm using my little bowl um, to choose the order because I also reintroduced zodiac sign readings this time around so definitely check out your rising sign your your sun too and moon <laughs> if you want but definitely your rising sign um if it's not up already it'll be up in the next however many days but anyway so i i knew that your reading was coming up and I took a break between the last one that I did and yours right now to like have lunch and recenter and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, like I'm getting zapped by, <laughs> it's like the static thing, you know, like I, if I turn on a light or whatever, I'm getting zapped, touching my laptop or my phone, I'm getting zapped. So like my hair felt like it was just like clinging to me, which is why it's like half up and whatever is happening over here. But um, anyway, so I don't know. Is that dry skin? Is that just like feeling, you know, electrified? Are we feeling electrifying? I don't know. <laughs> I like that better than just dry skin. <laughs> but interesting. So I have this little... Um, this little bowl, I'm not even going to try to get it out, but it's kind of where I just put like the random stones that I, I like to work with or, um, you know, I just, I like the stone, so I keep it. And so when I sat down here, I can't even remember what actually happened, but this little stone fell out of this bowl, which is kind of random because I can't even tell you the last time. I actually touched any of these stones so for it to fall out I'm going to try to let me make myself a note actually <laughs> uh, because I don't know the name of this particular stone I wonder if I could just google it no Yeah. Okay. So it's Unikite. Let's see. Here we go. Don't you love when Google just kind of like reads your mind a little bit? Because I was going to type in Unikite meaning. <laughs> um, and it was already there as a, a suggested search. So it says Unikite is said to be a stone of vision, opening the third eye and useful for scrying. It is also believed to be a stone of balance, grounding the self while bringing emotions and spirituality together. Among crystal healing practitioners, Unikite is used to support convalescence from illness. The hell? Um, energy centers, third eye, serendipity, vision <laughs> very interesting I don't know so 
we're gonna we're gonna let it hang out here with us since it want it wanted to i'm assuming um but yeah let's get you an oracle reading or an art an oracle card and then of course we'll pull tarot and you know do our thing Be the hunter, not the hunted. Intense. <laughs> I love the owl element, but I'm kind of biased, of course. It's a number eight. I mean, just like the eyes, man. Like I said, like it just, it feels intense. Very interesting. I mean, I kind of keep getting like empress vibes from it like more about receiving instead of chasing in that aspect we have the six of pentacles let me see is this too many no okay we have the six of pentacles page of cups eight of pentacles the fool the tower Did we get the tower? Was that like the 2024 video maybe? <laughs> and temperance. It's interesting how all of the cards on the bottom are all major arcana and all of the cards on the top are minor arcana. I don't know. I mean, the odds of that happening that way. And we have the emperor at the bottom of the deck. Interesting because I was also thinking... This card could be the Emperor because, yeah, the Emperor is not going to be hunted, right? <laughs> like, I know I, I mentioned the Empress as far as, you know, receiving, letting things come to you instead of chasing. But the Emperor, and I didn't say it out loud, but the Emperor is like, no, bitch, I, I will hunt you before you even see me. Oh, let me make sure everything is in frame here. And then, of course, we'll start talking about your reading. Okay. I also, I moved the stone over here. I wish it, like, you could see the colors on it better. But I don't know. Whatever. You know, maybe there's an opportunity to work with Unikite for you as well. But let's see what the book says. For being the hunter, not the hunted. Do you feel you are at the back? Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Do you feel you are at the beck and call of circumstances, situations, and relationships that are outside of your control? Is your attention being called away from what you love, from your passionate focus upon your own journey journey and creative self-expression are you feeling roped into becoming a support tonic save savior and heal all for others which hello fifth line right <laughs> mm -mm -mm. there's a big difference between healthy supportiveness in a relationship which includes healthy self-support and ignoring your own journey out of misplaced guilt, shame, unworthiness, or the belief that the needs of others are more important than your own. That is not compromise. That is unhealthy and neglectful to yourself. You are being asked to see through the assumptions, expectations, tantrums, or manipulations that may be put upon you by yourself or others. See through them to the truth. You can only sidestep, change your response to, or choose to release that which you can recognize. This oracle brings you some important news. You are capable of seeing the truth, outsmarting old patterns, and responding more creatively to craft new and improved relationships. You don't have to be drawn into the dramas of others or the suffering of repetitive struggles. You can become still and intent with a willingness to see the truth in doing so you will be open 
to being shown another way through the inner wisdom of your heart and a flash of insight from the great universal mind that penetrates your own awareness. This oracle also brings you particular guidance that there is a message coming your way. This message will be important to you and you are not to paint it as anything more or less than what it is. Sit with your heart, take your time. Even if there is a deadline for your answer, you will be able to bend and stretch time so that in your right relaxation, you can feel for what your truth is in the situation at hand and respond appropriately. The more honest your response without the need to be aggressive or apologetic, the more energy you will be unleashing from unhealthy patterns and into a fresh new course your life now wants to take. <laughs> this is a powerful time for you. No matter how seemingly small or how appropriate Oh, how apparently dramatic events around you appear to be. Know that you are stepping into a new phase of empowerment. From that place, a new freedom and self-love will emerge. Mother Nature offers you the wisdom medicine of the owl, the ability to hear what is not spoken and see what is hidden in the darkness. Trust what you feel beyond appearances. The power of magic, the power and magic of the owl is working with you and mother nature is by your side assisting you in navigating the current life transition into a new way of being you know <laughs> that is the first time that i've actually read the full message from the book also i feel like it's not as long as the other messages from the book but yeah <laughs> interesting right I feel like this even, I feel like it even just, this whole reading is probably literally exactly what that book said, but we're going to go over it anyway. <laughs> it's interesting. So, okay, we start with the Six of Pentacles. And this is about give and take. Pentacles have to do with our money, how we get it, how we save it, how we spend it. It's our physical time. Where are we physically showing up in our lives? Where are we putting our time or spending our time? It's our physical body and our health. It's anything that we place worth and value on, including ourselves. And with the six of pentacles, you know, this person recognizes that they have enough to where they can share with somebody less fortunate. I feel too, you know, like the fifth line thing of it even mentioned, I think, being a savior. People project that onto us. And maybe sometimes we feel like we can, right? Like step into a situation and save the day. But it also, it's like this, this thing, when I was reading that, I kept like hearing strategy and authority, strategy and authority. I mean, it was talking about waiting to respond anyway, which is very uh, generator, manifesting generator, right? So... <laughs> But, I mean, you know, more so than that, it is about responding based on your strategy and authority. If you're a projector waiting for the invitation, if you are a manifester initiating based on, of course, your authority, if you're a reflector, those big decisions waiting the, the full lunar cycle, right? So, again... <laughs> If there is, though, an imbalance with that, or if you are going against your strategy and authority, because that's our strategy and authority is literally designed to help us enter into the correct, quote unquote, experiences for us. And our profile is how we interact with those experiences. Excuse me. So if there has been an unhealthy balance between you know like you putting in too much energy into a thing and not getting it out or not receiving that energy in return like an energy exchange did i just say that i don't know but um it's got to be reciprocal right and truthfully i mean you could be either one of these people on this card you could be receiving some sort of assistance and also making sure that that is in balance 
or you could be the person that is um, offering the assistance because you have the resources in order to do so. This could be charity, it could be a grant, it could be volunteer work. It could literally be somebody coming in and offering you something new because we have the full card underneath that and the full card is taking a leap of faith. It's taking a risk. There's this trust aspect to this because I mean, their eyes are closed. They're not even looking at where they're walking, but they're confident <laughs> about it, right? There's this surety to it because they're like, I, I already know that I take this step and whatever needs to be there to support me will show up. Love that. <laughs> so again, with it paired with the Six of Pentacles, whatever the Six of Pentacles is, there is some sort of, and usually with the Six of Pentacles, there's no strings attached. That's why I don't really mention loans when it comes to Six of Pentacles, because with loans, there's strings, right? I mean, you generally have to pay back a loan. <laughs> I mean, even if it is a loan, like if there are strings attached to something, this could be cutting those strings. There could even be, um, cause even the fact that I mention that I don't, that I don't mention loans, <laughs> I didn't have to do that, but for whatever reason I felt the need to. And then all of a sudden it was like, Oh, if it is a loan, even if that loan has to do with like your time, it's the, the strings that are attached to that would be severed in some capacity. Maybe you have a loan that is just like magically going to disappear. Love that, praying for that, for you, for me, for all of us. <laughs> but like I said, with the full card, this is like that moment that you decide also to take that, that next step. Cause they aren't like actually off of that cliff yet. But it seems like they are committed to it. I mean, at this point, I feel like they wouldn't stop moving forward. So there is, there's something, there's something there. And it could come from whatever this assistance is. Even, you know, like Oracle card was saying too, it's like, Um, you know, if, if it's some level even of like codependency or taking on too much responsibility for literally anything in your life, that there is an energy available for you to take a different route. And even more so than that, to trust that whatever the situation is that's going to be affected by that, it will figure itself out because again with with the full card right there's this trust aspect that whatever support is needed will show up when you take that step forward we have the page of cups next cups have to do with our emotions how we feel about things our relationship to love how we give it how we receive it more importantly <laughs> heart center and I mean, we can see back here, these choppy ass waters. This person isn't even concerned at all about that. They're holding their cup up. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you see somebody fall <laughs> and they have a drink in their hand, but you know, it's like they hold up their drink and nothing had like spilled out of it. <laughs> um, but there's this map on the floor. They're, they're focused on where they're going. Right. And since it is the page of cups, pages are younger. Um, I always call pages like the apprentice energies because they're new. They already have the ace of cups there. Right. So there's already something that's begun already having the ace of cups in your hand. Now it's like, OK, 
what am I going to do with it? It's, it's putting that into practice, into motion, into action. It's following your heart too. Because again, you know, there's this map that they have on the floor and their sole focus is I would be like, oh my gosh, look at these waves. Like, how are we going to get through this? <laughs> but again, even like a certainty and a surety that they are going to get to where they're going. So it's like whatever the Six of Pentacles and the Fool card are, it's allowing you or it has something to do with something you feel good about. It's even creating a new opportunity to feel good about something that you're doing. Maybe it even um, frees up emotional space and capacity for you to even focus on what you want, what you want to do, what you love doing, what you're passionate about. Now we do have the tower card <laughs> underneath that. So also too, like if, if you have been focused on where things are going, where you want them to even go, the tower card is like, well, I feel like it's just kind of funny that we keep getting the tower card or at least I know it's shown up at least one other time for us. And I think this is only the second reading that I've done that the tower card has even come out for. So the tower is like sudden upheaval. Something, it, you know, the strike of lightning, like something happens to shake things up. I mean, even the, the foundation or whatever that this house is on is not sturdy it's not secure it's literally in a tree there's somebody that's already let go there's somebody that is still holding on so something is clearly going to get shaken up but also i mean the tower card is never a bad thing to me anyway i mean i feel like it it looks ominous but the tower card is only going to affect the things that are no longer serving us. And unfortunately for a lot of us, the only way for those things to be taken out of our lives or for us to recognize that they need to go is for chaos. <laughs> for something sudden, you know, to, to happen. But I mean, this looks like it's a storm that's been going on. It's also even, you know, kind of interesting because in this card, there's clearly a storm because, I mean, otherwise, why would the waves be that crazy? You know, there's something clearly moving through there. And so for this to also depict a storm, it could, you know, with these two cards being together, it could be focusing on what it is that you even want out of your situation, even in the midst of chaos, because most times things do need to fall apart so that they can be put back together properly. I feel like that's, you know, if you're on any type of healing journey, that's what they call like dark nights of the soul, right? It's like this feeling of literally being taken apart. <laughs> I always kind of imagine like a, a puzzle and, you know, you, you put the puzzle together and then, which is you, right? We put ourselves together and then we take it apart and we examine each piece of that puzzle. And we're like, does that still fit? Is that still true or not? So then it's okay. <laughs> you know, what doesn't fit and what do I want to replace it with? So it's like this continuous, so then you, you put yourself back together with, without some parts, with some new parts, 
and it's fine for a little while and then all of a sudden something could happen whether it's it could even be transits i mean there's a lot of gnarly transits that are happening right now and will be happening through i think like the middle to end of may ish before things start breaking up <laughs> but um something ends up happening we get to a certain point again and we're like shit <laughs> like oh it's time to take apart the puzzle again because there's something that is not it's it's just it's not fitting correctly so we take apart the puzzle that is who we are and we examine it and i feel like you know if you are or have been on this deconditioning or healing journey you know at first it fucking sucks it does not feel good at all to have to look at like who am i <laughs> Right. And and how did I become the person that I am, the identity that I have, the personality, the temperament, right? Like the the stories or beliefs that I have about myself, about the world. Where did those things even come from? Right. And it takes time to get through a lot of that shit. And, you know, and then you put yourself back together and you're like, great, I'm healed. <laughs> and then something else comes up and you're like, ah. But I feel like it does like eventually get easier to recognize so you're able to like flow through it a little bit better. But anyway, it's interesting because, okay, so we have this tower card. Something, something is getting shaken up. The foundation is literally getting shook because then we have the eight of pentacles and this is the rebuilding. <laughs> but also, you know, the eight of pentacles is not starting from scratch they're starting from experience this is that mastering of of uh taking apart and putting back together the eight of pentacles is going to focus their attention their time their resources into mastering a thing they're building this wall here and i always kind of end up focusing on these these stones down here because they're they're kind of like different sizes and only experience will tell you what order to put those th those stones on the on the wall for it to be sturdy but that also takes practice and time so again you know there's there's work being put in here so this could be your job this could just be you know focusing on yourself focusing on your relationships I also feel like they're almost done. <laughs> At least with this part. I also love that we start with the eight or the six of pentacles, and then we have the eight of pentacles on the table. So there is this progression. There is this like moving through energy. This oracle brings some important news. You are capable of seeing the truth, outsmarting old patterns and responding more creatively to craft new and improved relationships. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that I picked the book back up. I kept like kind of getting the feeling of like going back and reading and I was like, I don't want to, but I'm glad that I did. <laughs> because then, you know, the we have the temperance card at the end of the reading. This is Sagittarius. The tower, I believe, is Mars, which is Aries or Scorpio. The fool is Uranus, which... I think modernly is, uh, or traditional or whatever is Aquarius. Not that those have to mean anything, but I'm just pointing them out. Um, the emperor is also Aries, but temperance is about alchemy. It's the blending together of energies. I always think of chocolate and that could be my Taurus son. <laughs> But, you know, like you have to go through a process to properly temper chocolate, right? And if you try to rush through it, if you skip steps, it's ruined. You have to go back to the beginning and start all over. So the temperance card, it is about alchemy. It's turning one thing into another thing. It's also about patience because it's understanding that it takes time. 
work, dedication to alchemize these things. We have these two cups and it's like the energy of both of those cups is creating this one, this one being, whatever that is for you. Even, you know, starting with the six of, of pentacles, there's two people on this card, right? There's one that's giving, there's one that's receiving. And you could be either one of those. On the tower card, there's two people. One's let go, one is still holding on. <laughs> on the temperance card, there's two cups, but it's... It's coming together. The energy of both of those cups is coming together to create this one thing. And it's paired with the Eight of Pentacles, which is putting in the work. There could be two people involved. There doesn't have to be. You know, I mean, the fifth line... Or, you know, five ones in general have a transpersonal karma, meaning um, we need other people <laughs> to fulfill our karma. So this could even just be interactions that you're having with people in general. I mean, it could be strangers. Very interesting. We have the emperor again at the bottom of the deck. The hunter, like literally, this is a divine masculine. Not not the gender, just the energy of initiating law and order. Like I said, you know, the the hunter protection even. This is also like, it can be a father figure, but like in the sense of an authority figure, because I've heard it said that like the emperor has the energy of all of the kings, like all four of the kings combined. So it's like, this is somebody that is going to take charge. This is almost too, like I keep also hearing, like being in control of your, your life, of yourself. Maybe even feeling like you have some, some level of control. You know, this is also somebody that's going to be like, this is what we're doing. Which is, you know, I mean, taking control, but it's like, this is what, this is what we're doing. This is what I'm doing. Making a decision, right? We have the three of pentacles, which is collaboration, working together. This is um, at least two people. It could be three. I mean, traditionally there's three people since it's the three of pentacles, but this is, you know, people working towards the same goal. Which could be why the emperor was out here. Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is the goal. This is what we're going to do to work towards it. We have the six of cups, which is the card of the past. Nostalgia, the good old days. This is also like a card, like acts of kindness with this card again with cups being our emotions this you know i mean even just the imagery is in his head so it's a memory so there could be something from the past that's coming back up this could be getting back to the way things were type of energy we have the knight of pentacles which is about like dedication, things slowly moving forward, commitment. I 
I love this. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. I will talk to you soon. Bye.